APTV is um, somewhat like a cloud service originally, and uh, uh, as a telco, uh, we NTT provide, uh, for example, um, catch up TV, and actually we have uh, uh, five major major uh, broadcaster that provides catch up TV over uh, NTT's IPTV platform, and also we have. Uh, uh, Star Rover TV. It's a kind of uh, time shift service, and we have started two years ago. And uh, also, we have uh, uh, TV shopping. It is provided over our IPTV platform, and we have a framework framework to uh, enable uh, interactive TV shopping. So, uh, third-party players can. Uh, provide their uh, contents like uh, promotion video and also the interactive uh, con interactive uh, portal that will provide the uh, TV shopping and so on. And the fourth one is uh, uh, recommendation over crowd. So uh, our IPTV platform has uh, lots of data, huge data. Uh, for example, the content itself or uh, metadata or uh, context information that can be gathered from each customers. So using those uh, huge data, we can provide uh, much more sophisticated, uh, enhanced recommendation for contents like uh, uh, video on demand. Like uh, catch up TV or uh, start over TV, I think uh, network, network TV are much fits the uh, IPTV crowd service. But uh, in Japanese case, the business model is quite important. It's quite essential because uh, broadcasters in Japan mainly gain their revenue uh, on advertisement. So uh, compared with the uh, broadcasters in Europe or USA, uh, I think uh, broadcasters here earn their uh, revenue not only by uh, advertisement but also pay TV and so on. But Japanese broadcasters mainly earn their uh, revenue by uh, advertisement. So if we simply provide network PVR, broadcasters will lose their revenue. So we have to uh, consider a new business model that will uh, provide the value-added service like, uh, for example, ad insertion or uh, lead or guide to additional purchase of contents like premium VOD and so on. So we are now in the careful stage to consider how we can, you know, uh, set up the ecosystem by network, network PVR. Uh, CineCloud is actually uh, a name of the service provided by uh, NTT America in USA. And it provides uh, post-production function of uh, content like cinema or drama, uh, animation, and also it can be extended to a TV program and so on. And uh, actually it provides the uh, real-time sharing function of the contents, original contents, material among uh, multiple sites, including you know the studios or uh, movie camera sites and so on. So they can share the contents and also they can produce, create uh, by post-production uh, for a movie. And uh, that service is uh, launched in USA now and it consists of uh, three uh, main function. One is the edge function uh, that provides uh, codec like 4K codec and the second one is uh, uh, the core, core. It provides networking, switching function and also uh, uh, management of uh, multiple project, like a uh, project of producing, creating the contents. And on the third one is the, uh, it is called simply cloud. It provides uh, transcoding function and storage. So 
In those three functions are integrated, integrated to a single service as Cinecrowd. That is Cinecrowd. I think uh, one is the uh, broadcasting for mobile terminal like uh, tablet PCs and uh, smartphone. Actually, uh, NTT Docomo, uh, it's the uh, uh, one of the group company will provide a new service uh, multimedia broadcasting uh, from this uh, April. It is actually a hybrid service of broadcasting and internet that provides interactivity. And I think the movement is it's common to the European countries and also USA. So I think uh, uh, mobile broadcasting service would be one of the main topics. And the second one is uh, social TV. Uh, in Japan, uh, uh, the social TV is just started. It's just er early stage. But uh, in European countries, uh, TV broadcasters are providing uh, integrated service of broadcasting and social network. And I think uh, in Japan, uh, broadcasters will are going to catch up those that are more sophisticated service uh, utilizing social network. And the third topic is uh, it's, uh, much more uh, sophisticated recommendation function. Because as crowd TV service, uh, we have a huge, huge amount of uh, data that includes content itself, metadata, and also the profile that is pre that is pre-registered by each user. So, uh, utilizing those huge data, we can provide uh, much more uh, enhanced recommendations. So, the third topic was uh, recommendation, and the fourth one is uh, HTML5. Uh, HTML5 is going to be standardized and uh, all the contents would be integrated to just a single HTML5 contents, including uh, not only IPTV, but also digital cinema, and also ODS or uh, other digital stuff for uh, public viewing, and digital signage, or uh, game contents, and apps, and so on. But those all lots of stuff are integrated as HTML contents over a common platform. So, uh, telco like us can go into the market to provide the new common integrated platform uh, based on HTML. So, that would be uh, one of the important topics for telco like us. There is Lots of telco and service provider from all over the world, so it's a, it's a nice chance for us me to you know uh, network and share opinion, share the experience among the uh, you know provider. So terrific for us, uh, for us, uh, for me to uh, uh, you know uh, to share experience and also the new topics because. Uh, new topic like uh, social networking. In Japan, social network is not common. It's just started, just in the early stage. But uh, here, I could be shared with the uh, lots of various experience by European broadcasters. And that would be a good information for us to start a new value-added service in Japan.